Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at exporting a number of files to a different file format in Lightroom so that you can hand them off to a client or to a friend. So let's select these three images in the library module. And of course, I could select 30 images or 300 images. It doesn't matter. Usually when I'm using the export module, it is because I have a large volume of images. If I just wanted to work on a single image and I wanted to work with that in Photoshop, then I would probably go to the photo menu and choose edit in and edit that in Photoshop. But in this case, I'm going to assume that I am finished working with these files. They're ready to hand off to the client. So I've selected them all and then I'll click export. You can see at the top that it says that I'm going to export these three files and I'm going to export them to a hard drive. I just need to pick the location that I want to export them to. Usually I would pick a specific folder, but I do want to mention that there is an option here. You can save them to the same folder as the original photo. And when might you want to use that? Well, you might want to use that if, for example, you have a collection of images and instead of collecting those images into one folder, you actually want to save each one of these files back to that original folder. But for now, we'll use a specific folder. We will choose where that folder is going to be by clicking Choose. I actually want to save this to the desktop, so I'll click Choose. And then I can select to put this into a subfolder, and these will be called my Japan for Client folder. And now I can decide whether or not I want to add these images back into Lightroom's catalog. In this case, I probably don't because I have the original raw files and they've all been enhanced in Lightroom. All I want to do is create a bunch of JPEGs, hand those off to the client, and then I don't need those JPEGs. If I ever needed a copy of the JPEGs again, I could always recreate them. And this way I don't have to keep track of multiple files. So I will leave this off and if there's ever a case where you might have a conflict with existing files, you can choose from the options right here. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to rename the files on export. I would suggest that if you do rename the files, just rename them by adding like a little appendix to the end of the name. Otherwise, if you rename all the files while you're handing them off to a client, then your original files and the files that you hand off might be different in names and then it's going to be very confusing. So if I wanted to, I could check to rename. I'd come down here to edit to create my own file naming convention and I'd probably just put like an underscore LR for low res. Then if I wanted to save that, we can just save it as a new preset. This would be my JCost file naming convention. And I would just put underscore LR to let me know what that is and then click create. You can see here we have an example. I'll click done and then it would rename this. And of course you don't have to. I could uncheck this if I don't want, but let's go ahead and rename them. I'm not working with video, so we can skip that. As far as file settings go, I do want to change the file format here. I don't want to hand off DNG files, so instead I'm going to select JPEG files. JPEG files are compressed files, so they're going to be a lot smaller. And I'm going to increase my quality a little bit. I don't want to increase the quality to 100% because that's going to give me a very large image. If I'm emailing these or if I'm going to post them somewhere where someone else has to download them, I might want to decrease the quality because that will also decrease the file size. If I decrease the quality down to about 90, I'm probably going to trim about a third of the file size off of each image. If I bring this down to 80, I'll probably knock the file size in half. But of course, as I lower the quality, I lower the file size, but the image might not look as good. So it's always a balancing act and you need to figure out where exactly you fall in the quality versus the size scale. I can also change the color space if I think that I'm handing them off to someone who's going to be viewing them on a screen and maybe their screen is not color managed. And if I really needed to limit the file size, I could actually check this option on and enter in the file size that I need. Now, I'm also going to decrease my file size by resizing my image. If you have some vertical images and some horizontal images, what you might want to do is just put in the dimension for the long edge or the short edge. That way, if you have some horizontal images and some vertical images, if the horizontal is the long edge, that might be like the 800 pixels that you define, whereas if it's a vertical image, the vertical side would be the 800 pixels. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just type in 800 pixels. Since they're going to be viewing these on screen, the resolution really doesn't matter. 
I'll come down to Output Sharpening. Since again, I mentioned they might view this on screen, I'll leave this set to screen, but you should know that if they were going to print it, you can actually set your sharpening for matte paper or glossy paper. Regardless of what the device is that they're going to sharpen for, you then want to dial in the amount, so low, standard, or high. And of course, this is more of an aesthetic choice. If I was handing off a bunch of images that had a bunch of clouds in them, then maybe I might just add a low amount of sharpening. If I'm handing off something that has high frequency and a lot of detail, like a landscape with a lot of trees, I might want to boost the sharpening a little bit more and add a high amount. For now, we'll just leave it to standard. You can also determine what metadata you want to travel with the file, if you want all the metadata, or just limit it to maybe the copyright and contact information. The one thing that I'll mention here is if you do have GPS data on your images, because maybe you've captured them with a camera phone, you might want to be a little careful here if you don't want to send that GPS data with the file, and just switch this to copyright and contact information only. You can also leave it to the other options, and then check to remove the location information, but I think it's easier just to do the copyright and contact information. We can also add watermarks to our images if we want to, and you can also do some things in post-processing. For example, sometimes you might want to actually view the images in the Finder or have them open up in Adobe Photoshop. For now, we'll just do nothing, and then if I think I'm ever going to use these settings again, well, I don't want to have to go through here and set them all up again, so I could always add this as a preset by just clicking Add, and then we'll say these are JPEG, they're in sRGB, they're 800 pixels, and they're sharpened for screen, so I'll just put S and then S, and we have copyright and contact info. I'll go ahead and save that in my user presets folder, but I could also create a new folder if I wanted to. That new folder would appear right over here, but I'll click create and we can see that that's now in my user presets. Excellent, when I click export, Lightroom will go ahead and export those three files. If I scoot over to the desktop here and I open a new window, we can see here, here is the folder Japan for Client, and there are the three images that I exported as JPEG files. If I click on one of them, you can see that the long dimension is 800 pixels, and in fact, the file name has been appended, underscore LRJPEG. They've also been sharpened, and the copyright and contact information will travel along with those images. So there you have it, a quick and easy way to export a number of images from Lightroom to hand off to your clients. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.